In my opinion, the most important part of afternoon tea, of course, is the tea, right? But the second most important component on any tea menu, whether it be afternoon tea, cream tea, royal tea, the scones. That's the big deal on any afternoon tea menu. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sonia and I'm very happy you've stopped by. Whether you call them scones or scones or however you like to refer to them, besides the tea, the scones are the one item on any afternoon tea menu that I judge pretty harshly. If you don't have a good scone, um, kind of the whole tea suffers, I think. Especially if you're going out for tea and you've got a pastry chef who's doing it, they should be really pretty special and not be like doorstops. And I've had a few of those. But at home, we are the pastry chefs. They're not hard to make. Scones really are quite easy, but if you've never made them before and you're feeling a little intimidated by them, why not consider a scone mix? Now, there are other brands available, many on Amazon, but one I find on store shelves most often is from Sticky Fingers Bakery. Now, they produce a fairly good result. They also have a very wide variety of flavors and fruit-filled versions, but I select the original plain because then I have a choice of leaving them that way, which I quite like. I can add raisins, sultanas, um, dried cranberries, dried apricots, anything you would like to add and really make them your own. The mix is as easy as it gets. You just add water. The directions also suggest dropping them by um, the spoonful, just making drop scones. Now, I don't really care for that. I like a rustic scone, I have said here before, but I don't want it to be so rustic that it's kind of just looks like a dirt clod. So, Besides, scones should not have to be cut with a knife. They're supposed to be broken apart easily. And if you just drop them, you're not going to have that kind of ease of breaking them apart as you would if you had a more formed scone. So that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put this in the bowl as they suggest. Just add my water. I think I am going to add some sultanas, some golden raisins and um, then we're going to pat that out and, and try to make them like a regular looking English tea scone. Okay, first things first, I'm going to preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 191 degrees Celsius, gas mark 5. And then I have lightly greased a baking pan and I've lined it with parchment paper and I dusted just a little bit of uh, flour over it as well. I'm going to set that aside until I'm ready. Now, into my bowl, pour my mix. And because this is just literally mix and water, this is when I'm going to put in my sultanas or golden raisins. Just kind of mix that in a little bit don't want them really clumped together. And I've got about a half a cup here, or about 80 grams of sultanas. Not a lot, just enough to kind of, you know, give it a little interesting texture. Okay. And the mix calls for three quarters of a cup of water. Three quarters of a cup of water is about 177 milliliters. Let's see how this feels. Now the directions call for one added tablespoon of water, but I need to see how this feels first before I decide to add that. Okay, yes, I think I will add that and then see how it feels. I should have put my towel down. 
Okay, one extra teaspoon, tablespoon of water is gonna be fine. Okay. Put a little flour on the countertop here. Let's roll these out. I'm going to add a little more flour to make them a little more manageable because this is, as it advertises, a very sticky dough. I like the idea of that more uniform look to them. Now what I'm using, this mix is supposed to get about a dozen. Um, my cutter is a little larger than I would ordinarily go for. This is about two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters. But I'm using it because it is fluted. And tradition has that plain scones are cut with a plain cutter. Fruit scones are cut with a fluted cutter. So. Let's just see how many we can get. And straight down, try not to twist. Place them on my baking dish, baking tray rather. got these out to about an inch. And so I ended up with about eight, seven and a half, if you count that little guy, um, out of what they would uh, suggest would be, should be 12 if you're just dropping them. Um, and like I say, this cutter was a little bit large. I like a two inch cutter. Okay, now before they go in the oven, I have mixed up here just a little bit of egg um, mostly egg yolk rather than egg white, and a little pinch of salt, and I'm going to put that over the tops to help them brown. Now into the oven these are going to go for about 14 to 16 minutes or until they're lightly golden on the top. Ooh, these do look pretty. These are large. <laughs> I think they look pretty good. Now I will tell you, I want a total of 18 minutes. The recipe on the back, or the directions on the back of the uh, package, says between 14 and 16. And I checked them, and they weren't getting as golden as I wanted them to. So I've left them in just a couple of minutes longer. I hope I didn't leave them in too long, but they do look really good. Let's have tea and see how they taste. They look really pretty, don't they? By the way, don't say scones are the same as American Southern Biscuits. They are not. They look very similar, I grant you. But the ingredients, the flavor, the texture, the density, even the method of making them, the, the mixing everything together, are not the same. It's a little like calling a cake, a two-layer cake, a, the same as a six-layer tort. If you cover them with icing or frosting, they look the same. They're not the same. Neither are these. So let's try and see if we can break them as we are supposed to. Okay, not as easy as perhaps a homemade, but very good. And I have these little clotted cream and jam jars left over from a previous video. So, waste not, want not. Let's uh, see about adding some of that. This would be how you would have your scones if you're having them out somewhere or with friends over. You would put your clotted cream and jam on the side of your plate before digging in. Okay, our tea.
חצי. Those are nice. They're nice and they look good. They were so easy. I mean, if you didn't want to go to the trouble of patting it out and cutting it out like this, you could do a drop scone. If that's what makes you comfortable and it's your first time, go ahead and do that. These are good. I hope you liked this video and I hope you'll try a scone mix like this perhaps. It might make things a little bit easier for you. Be sure and hit that like button, give it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing for alerts on more afternoon tea videos. Until next time, bye-bye.